1980 Golden Eagles. This is the actual first steel correct any body tow. 72 AMC Javelin State Trooper car. Our 70 GTO convertible, which you guys heard me talk about it. What year was it that we bought this? This is one we bought in Oklahoma. We drove back. 1968 Z28 63 split window Corvette. We are going to do an old school coffee walk today, the way coffee walk began. Kelsey came up with the idea that she was going to follow me around one day because every morning I come into the shop, grab a cup of hot joe, now it's Holy Grail Blend by Blue Island Coffee, and go say good morning to everybody and see what's going on. One of my very favorite parts of the job is seeing daily updates, weekly updates, and monthly updates on things we've been working on. I'm going to show you some cars today that you've never seen some that have never been on camera, and some that we've actually worked on for years, literally. So we have some we've worked on years, months, weeks, and days. And several of these you're going to recognize. Now, most of them, except for two, are still in the stages of being restored, so they're not done, but still very excited to show them to you. So grab your pot of coffee, certainly a big cup of joe. Let's go see some neat stuff. First one we see, this was out of the Wisconsin collection where we bought three V8 CJ5s, the rear Dodge truck, and a bunch of parts. So this is one of only three that we're aware of. 1980 P1 Black Factory V8 Golden Eagles. Again, it's 1980. When we found this Jeep, it had been repainted. We color sanded, buffed it, made it brighter, made it shinier, made the outside of it, really stepped it up. We took the aftermarket hard top of doors on it, put the correct factor of hardware and soft top on it. If you remember, the seats were out. Came with many, multiple sets of seats. We picked the very, very best 1980 only Gold Eagle seats, which we, these would have been the same that were in the 80 Laredo or a Golden Hawk. So it's got a very nice set of OE seats. Beautiful Levi's dash pad, one year only horn button. All the really neat original type things that came on the 1980 only. It's a T176 data 300. So this is a crazy rare Jeep. We've serviced it, runs and drives well. It's going to a major private collection. It would definitely be an asset to that collection. We did show you one that was in Wayne Schmecker's collection, which is one of the three known. And again, it's a V8. Power steering, power brakes, 304. We did not restore this Jeep. We cosmetically cleaned it thoroughly and serviced it. So now it is almost ready to go to a private collection. Again, this is one of three that we know exist. If you have one in any condition, you're interested in selling it, send that lead to social at cbg.com. Uh, let's walk. This is a project that we are five years into. Not the build of this Jeep, but this project itself. So the main item on this project is the body tub. The body tub is this entire piece here. This is all steel, all new panels that are all licensed by Mopar Jeep and this entire body is jigged in the U.S. This is the actual first steel correct fitting body tub. We worked five years with key parts, Mr. John Burnham, to come up with this. Look at the fit and finish. It is exceptional. Zach's going to show you pictures of the bottom of the tub, the inside of the tub. We have got it exceptionally close to OE correct. I think even the finest critics are not going to tell. Now, if you've got a CJ7, it's got rust issues. It is much cleaner, easier, nicer now to put a correct OE certified tub. Look at this Jeep, it's beautiful. Now, we had a great customer for this because he called and said, I saw your 84 Laredo that you guys had silver nutmeg interior, which in fact we put out there, it's the only one known to exist. He goes, I want an 85 silver Laredo with nutmeg interior. I'm like, sir, I've never seen one, but we'll build you one. So that's what we're in the process of doing. Check it out, I think it's just stunning. Silver with nutmeg. Now again, it's not done, but it's close. What a stunning color combo. Now that we've got this tub basically perfected, we are gonna be able to save a lot of Jeeps that we weren't able to save before. And I am talking quality, quality tub. Now they're a limited run. It takes a long time to properly jig it and get them together. And so for the next year, if you need your body tub replaced, you're going to have to send it to us because we're not going to have enough to sell them. Next, the 72 AMC Javelin State Trooper car, Stardust Silver. 
This is a rotisserie restored car. We've hit on this a couple of times. The two guys that own the pass between their time and receipts spent almost $100,000 on this car. But they spent six years on it. Once we got it in, we got the interior completed in it, all the electrical done, got all the gauges working, got it running and driving, put all the AC in it. We put about another 200 hours in it. I came and looked at it and the paint just wasn't nice enough because the car was so incredibly nice, had so much effort into it. So we took all the exterior stuff off of it and resprayed it, chroma base, base coat, clear coat, stardust silver, and you've got Admiral Blue panels, let's go check those out. So again, the shop's open, you're gonna hear noise and banging and air hoses in the background, I apologize for that, but we normally shoot this super early, super late today, we didn't. The Admiral Blue paint on the car was very nice, so we did not respray it. So what we did is we scuffed it and shot it with our same chroma base clear that we did on that. So the clear texture is going to match. Beautiful. There's your spoiler, hood, and deck lid. Check that out. Does that look familiar? It's been a while since we bought this car. 70 GTO convertible. Ram Air 3, four speed, with air, one of 174 built. Let's go see some progress on that. All right, look at that. Josh, how are you, sir? Sir? Great, great. I got your uh, spoiler paint. Awesome. That's so it's in the booth. How's it working? Oh man, it's great. Look at the difference here. Wow. So what are you using to clean that? This is a handheld powered steamer. Okay. And so basically I'm just using steam and uh, simple green. So what we elected to do, even though this is an incredibly rare 70 GTO convertible, which you guys heard me talk about it, Ram Air 3 4 speed with air, one of 174 built one of 24 were there, crazy rare, probably the only one in this color combination and probably the only one with this many options. Power windows, power steering, power brakes, I mean it is hard, hard loaded. The interior appears to be original, is it? Yes sir. Okay, so Josh took the seats out and they were really dirty. I don't know, that, I'm not going to say they've never been cleaned, but they've certainly never been deep cleaned. I broke the factory seal on all the bolts. So. <laughs> okay, so it's never been out. Correct. Very good. And you could tell when seats have been out before. This thing was really dirty, cleaned up well. You gotta have either steam or dry ice to get the dirt out of there, right? Yes, sir. So again, look at that. What a huge difference. Now, a car of this stature, which is a blue chip muscle car, sure we could put an interior, sure we could put a top in it. I think it's neat to see this car was not ridden hard to put up wet. This is the original top of this car. It is not in very good shape. Now, that'll be the big top debate like the Corniche, but it's very easy for me to buy a top and put one on. It is very difficult to find a 70 GTO convertible, especially a Ram Air 3 car with original top. So it came in and the process we go through on paint like this, fortunately this was base coat clear cut, right? Yes sir. So from talking to the owner, and I think you took the inspection sticker off. I did. Yeah, it was 2004, right? Yes sir. So last time it was inspected is 2004 and it's been a while since we bought this car. This car sat in the warehouse for probably six or seven months. It was in line, it was on your board. Yep. He's like, Josh was like, because Dennis, I can't clean that car in a week. I'm like, fair enough. So you, car. today's Friday. It's been more than a week, right? Oh yeah. And how much more time do you need? I'd say at least probably another week with these seats. Two weeks to do a proper detail. But what he did, we, we rolled the car in because we want to assess the paint to see if we can save it. Because the last thing we want to do is blow this car apart and spend 20 or 30 grand and actually the car is worth it. But if the paint can be saved, we're going to try to save it. So you rolled it in, you washed it, you clay barred it, yes, and then you hit it with what? 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 wet sand, then a uh, hard cut, and then a polish. So why did we go through all that? I pop in because I love to see this stuff because I'm not overseeing these guys. But Josh called me after the first two cuts. He's like, man, I'm just not getting deep enough. Because what I call it is I want the clear flat. And that's what you're looking for, right? Yes, sir, yes. So we might have this entire quarter panel flat and just have two or three low spots that are in the clear, not in the body, so we've got to cut it one more time. So we're talking color sanding and polishing on this car four days? At least four days. Yeah. Well, let's give it five. So you're talking 40 hours to do that. But what's neat is when you look at the car, whoever painted this car in the 90s, did a heck of a job, right? I mean, it's turned out great. When I believe by looking at the records, the, the soonest this car was painted was 97. It could have been older than that. So let's just get a 97, been 26 years. Um, we have dry iced the chassis and 
thank goodness it's nice. The floors are nice. We can finally rest in the floors. We have not done the engine bay detail yet, which we will. But before Josh did all this work, in which I know you like this because the guys are in and out of it, we have done the mechanical service, runs, drives, and does everything it's supposed to do. So I think mainly we did a big service and an incredible detail in this car. And by looking, talking to Josh, Alex, and Kevin, we're probably going to have 200-ish hours into doing that. And again, it's not a restoration, but we're bringing the car back to life. I'm excited to see that. What, what, the wing was in the booth. I forgot you're down here doing this. <laughs> I'm glad it's done. It looks great. Thanks. Perfect. All right, we'll give you an update when it's done. Next up, look what Alex is working on. Just look at that. I mean, just car. look at it. Yeah. I mean, just get a look at that. A cop did that. A cop. Oh, where is he? I'd like to look at him. He got a big smile on his face, too. So Alex is there the day we picked this up. Let's see if you can remember. I know you've been looking through your phone. What year was it that we bought this? 18 or 19? 17? I think you're right, it's 19. Okay. Okay. So we've had this car for four years. Yeah, it's been I think a while. it was March-ish. We brought this car back and we went gung-ho, full bore on this. So we had you, Eric, and jo Eric Wounds and Josh Grisham working on this car, right? Yep. So we had a system at the time called Clutching where you guys logged everything. So we're multi-years into this while they're pumping cars in and out, all oh, the yeah. normal stuff. Well, somebody got completely burnt out on this car and it was me, even though these guys were doing all the work. So we cut this off, I put it in my garage at the house, I was burnt smooth out because I spent so much time studying all the fit, finishes, decals, numbers, chasing down parts. I want a huge thank you to BMW Dallas, Mr. John Cobell, and BMW M Sports because anything we couldn't get, they either made it or they tracked it down. So BMW was huge in this. But we're four years into this car. Now, about a month ago, Alex came to my office and said, I'm not burnt out on the M1 anymore. And this is actually his motivation, right? Oh, yeah. And I don't know, maybe it was Kim. Uh, Did she come to you? No, she didn't. You promise? I promise. Okay. Well, I have a sneaking suspicion Kim may have asked Alex, can we get that car sold this year? Nevertheless, it's in here. This is one of the best restorations we've ever done. Yes. We started off with a car that was original paint, no hit, one owner, which was huge. Yep. 18,000 kilometers. The reason this car was sidetracked, and Alex and I studied this a lot, it was a very common thing that happened to the M1, the clutch blew up, and it broke the bell housing. Yep. Well, so first off, right off the bat, we're on the hunt for a bell housing before we could do anything. That was a miracle we found one. Well, the next miracle was we were going through BMW. We knew it was a short mile motor, but a very expensive motor. It turned over, mm -hmm. but we were afraid to run it. Um, maybe we shouldn't have been. Nevertheless, again, BMW Dallas, Mr. John Cabell spent an incredible amount of time and miles chasing down all OE gaskets, yep. rings, bearings, everything to go through the motor. And I'm talking everything. Was and I was shocked at how many parts that was. Uh, it's over-engineered. I mean, the, it, was, it was pages, 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 pages. They got it all together. We got it all together, sent to Jamie Wells at Wells Racing, and he went completely through the motor. Yep. He's like, the motor is beautiful. He said, but it's going to be bulletproof now. We sent the fuel injection off and had it rebuilt in California, the pump itself. We'd done it before, but this was a little bit different than the Porsche ones. Yes. We get in the car, we had to rely on one of our genius friends, Ron Bazzanelli. He came on to help Alex get it running. Mm -hmm. We got it running. And when you see the detail work on this car, which will be a little bit more in the future, the engine bay is an absolute work of art. There's seven different types of finishes between chrome, zinc, CAD, uh, three different colors on the exhaust. We researched right. and did all that. Nevertheless, Alex and Ron got the car running. And I test drove it a couple of times, took it on the street. I'm just like, man, it just, as soon as it gets hot, it, it falls down in power. Yep. So the biggest genius that I know, other than Ron Bazzanelli, is Michael Luongo at Norwood Auto Italia. He said, bring it over, worked on it in the past, haven't done it in a while. He goes, tell me what you guys have done. I said, well, here's what I think. I said, first of all, we blew it completely apart, including all the linkages to the injection setup, which is a lot, because we yeah, wanted to replace it all. We took pictures of where it was and thought we had it set right, but it wasn't exactly set right. And he's got all the tools and the velocity stacks and all that to measure flows and all that. So he gets it there, he goes, 
He goes, man, Jess, I can't believe you guys got this car this close. He goes, it, it runs fine. We started until it gets warm. So he calls back. He goes, we scratched our heads on this one. Well, we figured it out. This pump is a little bit different than Mercedes pump. Okay. It's a little bit different than the Porsche pump. When it gets warm, there's a rod that goes on the inside that richens it out when you're starting to run it hard. Makes sense. Well, that rod stuck. Even though we'd had it rebuilt in California, I'm not going to say they did it. They sent it off to a specialist in Germany that specializes in M1s. And they fixed it, put it back, set it, dialed it all in. And then we were waiting on, one of the reasons we sidelined it is some of the air conditioning parts simply were not available. Yeah, that was well, guess what BMW did? They made them off of their specs in their race shop and sent them to us. Yeah, so we cool. actually have the AC working in this car, which I'd be willing to bet it's one of the only one M1s that actually oh. runs like this car and the AC works. Right. Can we see the engine bay? Now again, this car is not done, but when it's done, I believe it'll be the best one in the world. And we're four years into it, so you might see a little dust and whatever, and Alex can go to the car and get it perfect. But what I want you guys to do is look in this engine bay and look at the level of detail that Alex put into this. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you used three different companies just for plating. Right, yeah. There was powder coating, like you said, zinc, CAD. Well, some of the exhaust Everything. was high heat, some of it wasn't. Right, yeah. Just even the exhaust system on this car is three different colors. I have never seen a restore when somebody did that. I've never seen any pictures this nice. We photographed all this car, we took it apart. There's another thing in the final tuning of this that, that Michael Luongo, that we didn't know, he taught me. He said, he goes, Dennis, once we even got it dialed in as close as we could, these cars, you cannot perfectly fine tune it unless the air cleaner setup is on it. Yep. We spent an insane amount of time just restoring that air cleaner assembly. If you look, like let's say the last six M1s that sold, I don't think any of them had the correct air cleaner setup on it. They were all taken off or they lost them. Or they just put stacks on them, right, which yeah. they actually won't run right that way. Uh, we even located all the original correct hoses. Alex restored all these clamps. He took them apart, had them plated, put them back together insane and one of the coolest things we did that air filter element is not available so alex disassembled it so you have a metal base a metal top and a mesh around the outside he disassembled it and we took two ac cobra air cleaner elements pulled them out of the middle put them in there and put it in there yep. so i mean the attention to detail we put in this car is crazy i stopped logging the hours of 3000. you know what you got in it i probably don't even want to know yeah, but i <laughs> I'd be willing to bet that we're going to have 35 or 3,600 hours in this car by the time it's done. We did all the suspension, ZF gearbox, and again, this car only had 18,000 kilometers when we started on it, which is roughly 11,500 miles. Right. And the cool thing is when Alex dove into it, one of the things he told me, I don't know if you saved them or not, we did original tires. Yep, we still have those. Original fuel filters were on the car. This car had no history of service from BMW, which I believe it had never, ever been serviced. You still agree with that? I agree. Like when you took it apart, brakes, everything. Uh, we went through tire rack, Aaron at tire rack, guy that did us a huge favor, and I don't know how he did this, but he got with Pirelli and had the tires made because they were not available. Yeah. So we had the exact tires for the car. Uh, a couple other big detail things that we've done that you just don't see that are right. NOS cap centers in the correct Campagnolo decals. A lot of the guys that rep reproduce these, they're not correct, the font's not right or the angle's not right. right. So Alex spent a tremendous amount of time making sure these wheels are right. Just the, the, the tint, the color, the black, NOS lug nuts. I mean, just on and on and on. And you've had an open checkbook the whole time, haven't you? I have. <laughs> it's a big one. Oh, it's huge. It's scary what we spent on this car. I want to show you one other thing that BMW did for us, which is absolutely incredible, is when we bought the car, if you remember, this vent glass is broken. Yes. That is not available. They went back to the original manufacturer and had it made and date coded it for the car. Yep. Again, thank you cool. BMW. Alex went through the entire AC system. One of the big things, I've almost forgotten this, I know you haven't, is they pulled the harness out of this car, the entire wiring harness, and you and Josh spent, I know, more than a week on that bench. Oh, absolutely. Going back and forth, back and forth, testing and tuning and doing everything on the planet to get it right. And then there's another thing out there, which the guys, there's kind of a trick of the trade, and nobody would ever know this. I'm going to give the secret out. Maybe I shouldn't. But when you look at the computer in the car, and this is a common computer that was also used like in the 400 series 
Ferrari, it's this Magnelli, Magneti Morelli, okay? Right. So when these get extremely old, they're known to be problematic. Uh, Alex took this case and completely restored it where it looks exactly OE. And he and Michael Luongo talked back and forth, and this is genius, I'm gonna hand this one to you. So we took an MSD 6AL and hid it inside of this. Yep. You would never know that. But when we initially fired this up, we had to borrow a computer. There's an NOS one out there that one of the very, very well-known guys out of Oklahoma, is an incredibly nice guy, I'm not sure if I'm, used, if I'm allowed to use his name because he's so knowledgeable, people wear him out. He lent us his computer so we could fire up the car and make sure that's what it was. And he also said the same thing. He said, look, these magnetic really, it's not the way to go. Right. If you've got the original one, it's fantastic, which we did. He goes, hide a 6AL inside, which is what we did. And that's how you and Ron actually got the car to run better or run right. Right, even uh, when Michael was tuning it and driving it, he said this is probably the best tuned M1 he's ever driven. And he actually, and the other thing that I was surprised that he said this, and he goes, Dennis, that car has got a lot more oomph than I anticipated, way more power. Now this car was delivered brand new in France, and the guy flew over there and flew the car to Mexico in 80, and then it went to his compound in South Texas. Right. So this guy has some serious horsepower, but why am I mentioning that? This car's got a lot more horsepower, and I like it much better because it is a Euro delivery car, so it doesn't have a little smog and stuff on it. Yep, no cats. It, it's so cool underneath, no cats, and that's how it left the factory. I could go on and on about this car. I'm excited about it. I really don't want to sell it. But here's the next thing. You'll see the link below. This car is going to WWG or Worldwide Auctioneers in Auburn, and it's going to be sold on Labor Day weekend. Uh, I'm not saying I'm nervous, but I'm going to miss this car just looking at it. Yeah. And no pressure on you, but how much time do you have to finish this car? I think before this video airs, it'll be done. Okay. So next week. So a week or two away. But if you walk the car, again, it's not holistically final detail. Alex, you have absolutely killed it on this car. There's some other things we did, and I, again, I go for a long time, but I, I, these are big things to me. At the factory, when they painted these cars, they had oversprayed all these vents, yep. which, you know, we looked at all that. When you see the suspension pictures of this car, it is insanely nice. They had undercoating and overspray all over everything. We did not do that. This thing is beyond the way it left the factory. The way that we taped off and did the black is so much nicer than original. Uh, we spent an incredible amount of time on the car. NOS front end wall. It, is a, it does have a license plate bracket on the front, which a lot of them don't have. Um, one of the other things that I just remembered that I almost pulled my hair out on, these marker lamps, oh, gosh. not only are they not available through BMW, have not been available with BMW for like 15 years. And again, BMW was going to figure out how to solve that problem. Uh, that is the same as a Lancia okay. of 1980, and that's how we found those, the same part number. So some of the stuff we crossed back and forth. The interior is close to perfect. We had whatever wasn't perfect, we had Jody do it. Um, at DTS, which he's our go-to guy, which you see him for the really, really high-end stuff. And one of the neat things that we found, we found the absolute last roll of NOS carpet for this car. Yeah, that was cool. So if you go out and look at the, again, the last six or 10 that have sold, yep. the carpet they have in the cars is gray carpet. When you look at the color code, it's something gray, I don't remember what it is, but the carpet actually has got a green tint to it. We found NOS BMW green tent carpet for this car. There cannot be another set. I don't believe so. So I, I am super proud of what you've done on this car. You should be also, and it's gonna be done in a week. So this is one we have literally had since 1999. We're beyond labor and love on this car. So not only have we put 3,500 hours in it, um, I hope that Kim never takes the file and adds it up. It is this <laughs> thick. Yeah. And a lot of the invoices, the pages are full. And again, this is a difficult, this is not a car, I don't care how good of a restoration shop you are, that you can do quickly. You Absolutely just not. can't. Because you just can't go get the parts. One part would hold you up for eight months. Yeah, so this car on a level of, to put it in perspective, you know, we did the major build on the F40. Twice as many hours to do this car as the F40. Yeah. So there you go. Um, can we talk about the Shelby for a minute? Sure. This, uh, I'm buying Shelby's, which uh, Zach has thrown it up on Throwback Thursdays a couple of times. I've, I've been buying these cars since I was in my early 20s. This is one of the favorite ones I bought because it's original paint. 
Yeah, it's super cool. So in between just, you know, ordering parts for that and just getting burnt out, which I do a little <laughs> bit. Uh, I threw in the motor, I restored the valve covers and just trying to get everything correct since it is original paint. You know, we both want it OE correct, day coded 68. The interior is amazing original of this car, probably one of the best we've ever seen. Right, yeah. Uh, other neat thing is when we sent the motor out to the machine shop, they said it had never been apart. Generally, when you've got a 40,000 mile 428 yeah. Cobra Jet KR, the motor's been apart more than once. Right, yeah. Four speed car. So, this is coming soon. This isn't a rush. This is one that, you know, you can rush and get it back together, but he's working with, on this one on the side. Right. All right. Now, we're going to go show everybody the Z28. Oh, yeah. You happy with how that turned out? Oh, yeah, that turned out. All right. Good job, man. We'll see you later. Adios. Wow, check that out, Zach. So we try to rotate in and out uh, for final polishing and detailing and cleaning, so it takes a long time. A classic car and a Jeep. This is one we bought in Oklahoma. We drove back, which is unusual. We don't normally drive stuff back. The White Islander. So, new white top, which I love. We drove it back, had just a tour to pieces gray top. It was crazy loud, rained on us, whatever, it was still fun. The interior had two different types of seats. So we put a nice used set, gray cloth seats in it. Now it's going to get polished, buffed, waxed. The PDR, which is paint, didn't repair on anywhere it needs to go. The flares will likely get painted, and we already have a new stripe kit for the hood, which goes here. Remember in the video, this thing was greasy, dirty, dirty. It had never been cleaned under the hood, which is fine because a lot of times they'll clean up better. We fixed a bunch of oil leaks. Now it's presentable. Again, serpentine drive, California Jeep, power steering, power brakes, AC. So, saving a YJ, that's kind of cool. Now let's go see the 68Z28. 1968Z28 that we bought from Bobby in Victoria, Texas. He had an incredible story on this car. I knew it was right, I knew it was real. He was a very knowledgeable owner. Had the car since 1981. He said he believed that it was a lady driven grocery getter parts since 1979, if you remember. 1979 inspection sticker. Now when I looked at the numbers on the car, I looked at the car, to me it looked, it presented itself as a complete survivor. I even thought it was original paint. Car showing 79,000 miles, I believe. 73,000 miles. So all it came with was owner's manual. We sent off for the NCR shipping report and they said this car had always been in the South Texas area. It in fact was sold new in Corpus Christi, Texas which falls right along Victoria, Texas, where this car spent its entire life. What's neat is, you got Mr. Jerry McNeish out there, Camaro High Performance. I set up an appointment with him, sent the car to him. Um, I'm gonna make, tell you some statements that he said, but I'm gonna show you his three-page report. One of the neat things that I learned in this car that I did not know, is really cool, is if you look inside here, you see these cables here holding the motor down. This is on both sides. That was actually a mid-year warranty item. What was happening is people were revving the clutch, dumping the clutch, motor mounts were breaking, they were wiping out the fan shrouds, wiping out the radiator, wiping out the hood. All this stuff was original correct on the car. Uh, this car also had almost every service item that was done under warranty for warranty miles, which would also lead me to believe that the story is correct that this was a lady-driven grocery getter and never raced, as in the smog pump pulley which we have the service one, but we went back to the original one because that is on his sheet. He suggested we do that. All the smog pumps still in the car. It does appear the motor's never been out of it. He did give this survivor status in the engine bay, which is incredibly difficult to get, which means it is correct. Driver status for the whole drivetrain and shocks and chassis and did note on his report, there is no rust found in this car. Zach's gonna post his pictures of the drivetrain on this car. It is amazing underneath. To me, it looks like a 10 to 20,000 mile car. Absolutely beautiful. Original shocks, nothing has been painted, is as it left the factory and shockingly clean. So we've got engine bay survivor status, chassis survivor status, which is really tough to get, and complete interior survivor status. Look how well this cleaned up. Again, you're looking at unrestored, untouched, drivetrain, chassis, and interior. At further inspection, the hidden VIN number on these cars is in the cowl area. Jerry and his team removed that to check the hidden VIN number, which it is correct, authenticated that. 
he said he saw some overspray in there that didn't look exactly like the photographs of others we've taken apart. He said he looked at the car really, really hard um, because the marks on here show like original ones do where you can see the seams in the corner panels, the leaded areas, the way the stripes are laid out, and the car is all lacquer. He said in his opinion that this car has either had some paintwork or was repainted prior to 1979. We don't know why, but overall he awarded the car survivor status, which is huge. The walk around the car is a stunning, unrestored survivor 68Z28 that has had some paintwork. Now we didn't do any. We even left the nicks and scratches and stuff that were on the car, but there's really no dents in it to speak of. Didn't need to be PDR'd. Now these are old vintage Goodyear tires. I thought they looked great on the car. They're not the exact ones that left from the factory, but let's go take it for a drive. I'm excited. What an honor it is to get to drive an unrestored original 68Z. Now to me, in my opinion, I would rather have this car than a restored car. You know exactly what you're getting. And it has been certified and appraised by the absolute best in the business. And yes, we have the Camaro High Performance Certificate. And again, we've got the NSRS shipping report and Jerry's three-page report. In his report, it's incredibly thorough. He lists to the most minuscule thing items that are not correct. Now we have corrected probably four or five of those because it was easy. We've changed the pulley back to the original one. The service pulley comes with it, it's in the trunk. Um, the insert of the grill was the wrong color and it was missing the center grill insert. You see the gauge is really good oil pressure. Of course, we just started driving, temperature's low, battery's charging, clock, tack is working, speedometer, odometer are working. Again, we're running on old tires, but what a cool car. British green, white stripes, parchment interior. It looks white to me, but Chevrolet called it parchment. Really a nicely option car, rosewood wheel, AM radio, wood grain, console. Seat belts are super nice. Just a really honest stud Z28. Again, I'd much rather have this car than a restored car. Still runs hard too. Run along 55 miles an hour. Now these 302 motors, you turn seven grand. I'm not gonna do anything like this. This car's been sitting so long, but it'll get it. Listen to that. Woo! These things are so much fun to drive. It's always been garage kept. South Central Texas, dry area. Again, 1979 inspection sticker. And Bobby, the man we got it from, he said he always kept it running, but the last time he drove it was 81. Let's think about that 42 years ago. Brought it in, Alex did all the fluids, checked everything, really got it dialed in mechanically. I think the car should be left as is. There are a few things in the car that can be corrected if you want to go to a National Camaro event. Um, he did, Jerry did say that it's one of the best finds he's seen in the last two or three years. Now, I don't want to overhype the car, but it's a really, really good find in the Camaro world. So there you have it. We have rescued and got back out of circulation another significant piece of muscle car history, in my opinion. I love it. That was real close to it's time to pass this on to the next owner. Last but certainly not least, the 63 split window Corvette. Same owner for 68 years. You saw us recently rescue this. The restoration was done from 94 to 97. He spent three years on it. Frame up, body off, nut and bolt. The car was originally saddle tan on the outside with saddle tan interior. It's now black with saddle tan, which is a stunning color combo. All we had to do to this car is he's only driven it 4,000 miles since he restored it. Just went through it, checked all the mechanicals, everything operates great, checked all the fluids, buffed it, waxed it, did a full interior detail. Just a beautiful running and driving car. Again, this is not a numbers matching original motor, but it is a motor out of another 63 split window. I think it's about 500 numbers off. 
So you have a correct date coded 340 motor in it with the correct codes and even a 63 split window VIN on the block. Next best thing I think, probably even better than a warranty motor. We elected to leave this on here, thought it gave it a little bit of style. We left the drag racing sticker on it. The stereo in it's pretty amazing. It does have a big stereo. It's hidden in the glove box, subwoofer, speakers, and all that tastefully done. Engine bay looks nice and tidy. Runs and drives great as you saw in the last video. This car is now ready for the next owner. These are incredibly sought after. Now this will also be sold Labor Day weekend at Worldwide Auctioneers in Auburn, Indiana. Zach's gonna post all the links. Now what's exciting is at this auction, they have three 63 split windows. One for everyone. I think this is gonna be the one for a driver. You know, a 340 horse, four speed, killer color combo. Only 4,000 miles since full body off frame of restoration. They also have a numbers matching 63 365 horse fuel injected coupe and a very high end resto mod. So we're gonna hit all three possibilities for 63 split windows, Labor Day weekend at Worldwide Auctions. Thanks for watching today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I absolutely love the updates that are done in our shops. Have a great day. All right, today since we did a good old fashioned coffee walk back to our roots, everything that's going on at Collins Brothers, here we have Mr. Michael Salisbury, been here for 26 years. Our IT man, the only IT man we've ever had. Responsible for many, many innovations at Collins Brothers. Set up the eBay stores, e-commerce stores, all the networks, phone systems, everything. And he is retiring. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. And thank you for everything you've done. And guess what? He gets to pick the restaurant today. Where are we going? We're going to Ye Old Butcher Shop to have uh, ribeye and fry today. I don't think I've ever had that. Let's go eat. Well, I have tried some I've never tried before. So you got the fried ribeye, right? Ribeye and is, fried. This is what you recommended. So there's literally a ribeye on the burger. Yep. I don't know if mine's big enough. Wow. <laughs> you just have to pick it up and get it. The whole thing? Yeah. I'm cutting it half. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I got everything on it too. Yeah. Mess. I like messy things though. Yes. I know. Smoke. Well, I didn't do very good on the cut of the bun, but that looks damn good. Smells really good. Tastes really good. Look at that cut of meat. That's cool. Good idea, Michael. Good way to end the week. I agree. Ye old butcher shop on 15th Street in old downtown Plano. The ribeye and Friday, which is fried ribeye burger with french fries. Outstanding. Congrats on your retirement, sir. Yep, thank you. As always, please like, like share, and follow. And most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week. Check out the boom in this thing. Sounds fantastic. Really tastefully done. The mids and the tweets are in the doors. The amps are hidden underneath the seats. And the subwoofer is back here. And then it's all hidden in the glove box. Thank you.